Hello my dear friends, you're in the military summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 7th of July of 2024. Today we have a lots of very interesting updates, so let's start. And the most important and the most interesting updates are coming from Taretsk, New York agglomeration, where the Russians continue their offensive operation and during the previous 24 hours the Russians managed to achieve significant results. First, let's talk about the report of Ministry of Defense. The Russians are saying that as a result of a very heavy clashes, they managed to establish complete control over the village by the name of Chigari. So this is the village, at least the part of this village that was captured by the Russians and there are a few important things based on this report. First of all, the Russians captured the village of course and the second one, this report confirms that this landfill, this landfill of the coal mine by the name of South, still either under Ukraine control or in the gray zone. But due to geolocations and videos and reports we've been receiving during the previous few days, we can make a conclusion that the Ukrainians in this area either are encircled or already abandoned their positions. This this is a very important stronghold before further movements in direction of New York. We will discuss this in a minute. So summarizing everything, the Russians are trying to bypass or semi-encircle or half-encircle the landfill from the south and from the southeast and from the southwest. And as well as the Russians are trying to do this from the west, from the east and from the north and from the northwest or so something like this. The Russians are trying to attack this way and this way. And most likely during the next few days, the Russians will establish complete control over this territory which will allow them, which will open them the gates and window of opportunities to move further in direction of Zalizne in this area uh, and of course in direction of New York that located in the southwestern direction from this landfill, so something like this. Now let's move further. Let's talk about the second citadel. This is the first citadel that is about to fall or was already captured by the Russians. And this is the second citadel, the high-rise building area. As you can see, we have adjusted the map. The Russians captured significant territories in this area. They captured lots of high-rise building. But uh, everything is not so simple as I'm describing you. We will discuss right now in, in details for your best understanding. So as you can see, according to this configuration of the map, we have adjusted the territory and we have this part of the citadel under complete Russian control. Uh, these adjustments on map was made based on this video that was published by the 32nd Mechanized Brigade of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. In this video we can see the Ukrainian tank that was moving along uh, the Unity Street and that Ukrainian tank within a very short distance was attacking the Russian forces inside of the high-rise building. The author of this video reported that as a result of this attack the Ukrainians managed to to destroy the positions of the Russians in these uh, buildings. So if we turn back on map, uh, the Ukrainian tank was attacking the Russians from this point towards this building and from this point uh, from this point towards this building. Uh, based on these two points, based on this video, most of the mappers, including pro-Ukrainian neutral and military summary map, have adjusted their maps. But there is one important uh, thing that you need to understand. I believe you have already seen the maps of different mappers. One thing you need to understand that nobody, nobody for now knows how exactly the Russians managed to capture these two buildings. Everybody have adjusted the map, including military summary but neither me nor anybody knows exactly how the Russians answered there. Uh, maybe just the forces of 32nd Mechanized Brigade knows exactly how the Russians entered this territory. Or maybe uh, the Russian forces who captured these buildings knows for sure how exactly they appeared there. Because uh, uh, most of the mappers adjusted this part of uh, the citadel, but who knows, maybe the Russians were attacking this territory using this road of attack. So for now we need more updates uh, to adjust the map, And but before we continue I would like to tell once again that maybe map will be changed and maybe the Russians were attacking using this route of attack but not this one as you can see right now on the screen. So one of the maybe maybe the Russians were using both ways who knows. Anyway sooner or later we will uh, find this out. As for the uh, central part of Druzhba and Taretsk we have additional videos of how the Russians were bombing the Ukrainian positions. By the way maybe the Russians were attacking uh, the citadel using this route of attack for now we don't know for sure but anyway we 
see that this is something like artillery preparation before possible further waves of attacks. So anyway, the central part of Taretsk, the central part of Pivnichna, Druzhba, Pivdina are about to fall and the Russians are about to move further in the western direction. And as for the western direction and as for the Ukrainians and what are they going to do next, we can make a conclusion that currently the Ukrainians try to think and try to find a solution how to stabilize the line of combat contact, how to stop the Russians along uh, Pionierov Avenue. So this is the P Pionierov Avenue and this is Central Street. And this is the next defense belt of the armored forces of Ukraine on Taretsk uh, direction. Uh, this defense uh, uh, based on the two um, landfills, two Terikons. One uh, Terikon has the name of Pivnichna, the second Terikon is, has the name of uh, Artyoma and one high-rise building area, another citadel in Taretsk. And most likely the Russians, due to geolocation in the vicinity of the southern coal mine and the, the central citadel most likely the russians during the next uh, few days maybe not days but maybe during the next few weeks are able to will be able to establish complete control over every single street and every single building uh, to the right and to the bottom of this red line so everything will be captured most likely and now let's discuss in details what the Russians are going to do next. And for this understanding, of course, now it's better to start discussion about the situation in New York. As you can see, we have adjusted the map. Most of the mappers have adjusted their maps and these their adjustments were, was, uh, were made based on this video. This video was published by the special battalion, special assault battalion Scala 425th. And in this video, we can see, at least according to the author of this video, how the Ukrainians were counter attacking the Russian edge, Russian positions in this direction. Currently we don't know for sure whether the Ukrainians managed to restore control over this territory or not, but the clashes were taking place here. We haven't colored this territory as a red color or as a Ukrainian color, yellow color, because we don't know for sure how exactly this battle finished, was finished, but we know for sure that while the Russian, while the edge Russian forces were, um, let's say, holding these positions on the Ukrainian counterattacks, the main Russian forces were clearing the uh, positions in Novgorodska and Yurivka in the south. So while the Russians were uh, defending their positions there, the main Russian forces were clearing and moving from the south in the northern direction. Obviously, the Russians during the previous few days managed to achieve significant results, significant progress, and obviously the Russians are not planning to stop. They will continue their movements. And based on the geolocations, we can make a conclusion that the Russians are planning to move in direction of this block between Zalizna Street, Birigovo Street. So this is already eastern Novgorodska, eastern part of uh, New York. So this is the next primary target for the Russians based on the geolocations. Or this is the territory where the Ukrainians tried to concentrate their forces and now the Russians are bombing them. But uh, to summarize everything, we see that the Russians are moving in this direction by um, attacks in the vicinity of the southern coal mine. So we can make a conclusion that uh, the Russians are trying to attack this territory with the pincer stack and they will try to meet forces somewhere in this area and to collapse and to close the small cauldron probably for some forces of armed forces of Ukraine. So this is the situation on this direction. Everything is not so good for the Ukrainians and the most important that Ukrainians uh, were forced to redeploy a significant number of forces to stabilize the line of combat contact. The last time we saw such a big number of forces that Ukrainians were using for stabilization was Kharkiv direction. Now they're doing the same in Taretsk direction. As we discussed, they have redeployed Skala Assault Battalion and the most important, the Ukrainians have redeployed the forces of 32nd Mechanized Brigade. And this is probably a very um, dangerous uh, staff decision uh, made, uh, de made by the Ukrainians. Uh, why is that? Uh, if you remember, a few days ago we were talking about 32nd Mechanized brigade and uh, our talks our conversations were related to the situation that took place in Sumy area if you remember uh, we talk uh, about some redeployments on the map about changes on deployment map the Ukrainians decided to reinforce Sumy area trying to avoid or to prevent any attempt from the Russian side to capture this region they have redeployed the forces of 31st mechanized brigade of 67th mechanized brigade of 53rd mechanized brigade there were significant numbers 
number of territory defense brigade artillery systems and also the ukrainians have redeployed the forces of 32nd mechanized brigade in the same direction and now we see that ukrainians urgently were forced to move back this brigade to Taretsk, new york agglomeration what does it mean that means that ukrainians are out of reserves they don't have forces they don't mainly they don't have ammo they don't have weapon and now the russians see and they understand that for the ukrainians due to the fact that they were forced to remove one brigade from Sumy area the russians understand that currently there is a lack of forces in this area and this is the best time to begin offensive in Sumy as well so who knows maybe the russians are planning to attack in this direction as well of course, we remember the words of Zelensky, who's saying that he has created 14 additional brigades and that the only problem Ukrainians have is they don't have weapon. But according to his logic, we can say that currently in the territory of Ukraine, around 30 million people live. So if uh, we say that uh, 14 brigade doesn't have weapon, we can say that 30 millions of people that don't have weapon. So it's not like 14 brigade; it's probably 140 brigades all over the entire territory of Ukraine who doesn't have weapon that but they can be used on the line of combat contact so when Zelensky talks about 14th brigade he doesn't uh, tell us anything new or anything special now let's move to the western Avdiivka direction we have additional updates the Russians continue uh, hunting and destroying Ukrainian forces and during the previous 24 hours according to information we have the Russians managed to destroy another Abrams tanks in this area and this video for example we can see destroyed Bradley as a result of FPV drone strike first Bradley was damaged and then Bradley was destroyed as a result of second or maybe third attack a little bit further in the southern direction we have Ukrainian Abrams that was first discovered by the Russian reconnaissance services and after that was destroyed as a result of four or five uh, FPV drone strikes uh, the armor of this tank is pretty powerful but uh, nobody can survive probably under strikes of five FPV drones uh, or, and neither Abrams tanks of US production so this is the situation in this area as for changes on the ground the russians improved their positions in Vashod and the russians improved their positions in the northwestern part of Novosilovka Pirsha by uh, taking the control additional three lines and reaching the positions and reaching the water barrier by the name of Balka Samoylova uh, during the previous videos we talked that most likely the Russians will try to attack the northwestern part of Novosilovka Pirsha but the Russians decided not to hurry up not to uh, be they tried to be careful not to uh, let's say waste uh, personnel not to waste resources first they decided to improve their positions on their flanks and most likely starting off tomorrow the Russians will try may, will try to make first attempts to answer northwestern part of Novosilovka Pirsha or the Russians will start clearing this territory through with FPV drones. Uh, furthermore, we got additional updates uh, from the fields. As you can see, another tank was destroyed as a result of Russian FPV drone strike. Uh, anyway, we see that the battle for this, for the Western of Diefka foothold, is about to be finished. And after uh, the, after as soon as the Russians are able to reach Karlovka Water Reserve, as soon as the Russians are able to reach progress, then we are going to stop talking about Western of Diefka battle, and we're going to start talking about Eastern Selidova or Eastern Pakrovsk because uh, from this moment probably the distance between Pakrovsk and line of combat contact will be almost the same as uh, from the line of combat contact to Donetsk so significant progress as you can see uh, made by the Russians now let's move further in South Donetsk direction we haven't received anything special or anything important just some fire anomalies uh, let's say between Ugledar, Vadyana, uh, Mikoyska and Vladimirovka which confirms that the Russians are bombing this territory probably this is something like artillery preparation before further attempts from the Russian side to move further in direction of T0524 road. Now let's move a bit back. We haven't received anything special about Chesevyar as well as anything special about Sivers. Just a few videos of how the Russians were bombing and attacking the Ukrainian forces inside of the stronghold. There are, there are very heavy clashes. There are very heavy clashes to the west of Sporna in the vicinity of Verkhnikamyanska uh, stronghold in the Belagorovka direction in the northern part of Razdolovka. But uh, all these things, all those things were just artillery preparations and bombings without any attempts to attack on the ground. Probably after a very short operational pause, the Russians will renew their attempts and they will try to move further and to get as close as possible to Siversk itself. But currently the main Russian focus is Taretsk and New York because very soon we're going to see the NATO summit in Washington and there are still two days, 7th, 8th and 9th of July and during the next these three days, not full three days, 
And the Russians will try to improve their position significantly. And of course, the main Russian target, the main Russian task during this NATO summit in Washington to publish piece of news that the Russians established the flag in New York. Of course, this is going to be headliners. Now let's move further in direction of Makievka. The sources reported that the Russians entered the village and that they managed to improve their positions according to different mappers and according to pro-Russian sources that are very heavy clashes and the Ukrainians are about to abandon their positions. From Ukrainian side, these territories under responsibilities of 66 mechanized brigade. In the northern part, we got additional updates from uh, Pishane. According to pro-Ukrainian mappers, the Russians managed to establish complete control over the southern part or over at least 80% of the southern part that located to the south of Pishana River. It's per about, to Ukraine, about Ukrainian sources, but as for pro-Russian sources, the Ukrainians were completely defeated in this area and the Ukrainians are running back as fast as possible towards the river by the name of Oskol. As for Oskol direction, Oskol River, the Russians regarding the fact that most of the bridges is just regular sand, the, the Russians continue bombing and attacking this territory is trying to ru ru ruin and to reduce Ukrainian logistic as much as possible during this active phase of offensive operation. And now let's move to Volchansk area. We have additional updates from this territory. The most important are coming, of course, as usually from uh, the small territory that is still under Russian control and that Ukrainians are trying to capture. They've been trying to capture probably for the previous two, three or even four even months. The Ukrainians are trying to attack this territory from the east. Uh, for these purposes, the Ukrainians uh, tried to send additional reinforcements from the southern part to the northern part, but the Russians see everything, and as soon as they see another concentration of forces, another concentration of group that tried to cross the river, the Russians start bombing and attacking this territory. According to information we have during the previous days of those attempts, the Ukrainians lost few tens of soldiers. As for Tikha, most likely the Ukrainians have already concentrated the forces, uh, tanks, armored vehicles, personal carriers to counterattack Russian positions. But um, uh, the Russians are bombing this territory heavily with FAP uh, 500, with FAP 250. Uh, with Toslim Trower systems, the Ukrainians suffer significant losses and they just can't start offensive. Every time they, they start doing something, the Russians start bombing them with a very heavy weapon. And But on the other hand, we see due to the geography of uh, Russian strikes, we see that the Ukrainians managed to concentrate forces on a very big territory. So all these fields, all these tree lines, all these forests under complete control of Ukrainians with significant number of tanks, armored vehicles that are hidden between these all these natural barriers and uh, very soon most likely the Ukrainians will try to attack and probably they're going to do this tomorrow or this upcoming night this is going to be the first attempt from the Ukrainian side to attack using this road and with the purpose to restore control over the lost territories and maybe even to enter the territory of Shebek in the region so the next uh, 48 72 hours are going to be vital and decisive at least for this direction as for the central of Chansk, north Part, certain part, central part of the north of Chansk. The Russians reported that they managed to achieve significant results in the citadel. For now, we don't know for sure what kind of exact uh, progress they managed to achieve to capture some additional buildings or to force the Ukrainians to fall back. The only video we have is that this part of Avchansk completely covered with smoke and probably there were very heavy clashes and maybe the Ukrainians abandoned their positions, who knows. But as for the videos, we still continue receiving updates of how the Russians were bombing and attacking this territory. For example, in front of your eyes, we can see the citadel itself. And as you can see, the part of the citadel that lays along the Russian positions uh, is already reduced to ruins. Uh, some buildings, just walls left from some buildings. So for now, it's very dangerous to stay there. And uh, the only part that managed to survive is the southern part of the citadel. Uh, this one, maybe the Ukrainians will try to hold these positions for another week or something like this. As for Burguvatka, the Russians reported that during the previous 24 hours they managed to um, see clear another true line in this area and to improve their positions. As for Gluboka, uh, I believe that uh, the Russians most likely will left Gluboka. They will try to hold this village as long as possible, but according to the Russians, this is going to be another Robotina. And everything about the same. Uh, the NATO summit in Washington. This is a very important uh, event, media event. Either the Russians and the Ukrainians try wants to save or uh, establish control over this territory. The Ukrainians need uh, to raise their flag at least anywhere, and Gluboka 
Volka is the perfect position where they can do this. And of course, the Russians are trying to do everything they can, but not to allow the Ukrainians to do this. Uh, most likely, most likely, after 11th of July, after the end of the same uh, NATO summit, e either the Russians or the Ukrainians will decide to stop either offensive or to fall back. Ukrainians, uh, if they uh, don't get any results uh, before the end of the uh, NATO summit, probably will decide to stop any offensive uh, because they don't want to lose manpower as well. And maybe if the Ukrainians uh, don't make this decision, uh, the Russians will uh, decide to fall back under such a heavy pressure because the Russians also suffer losses. The problem is that this village of Gluboka can be supported just with two roads. The first supply roads road goes from Strelechna to the south. This is the first uh, supply road. And the second supply road goes from Pilna through Alenikova, Marachavets and then to Gluboka itself. The first supply road was already cut off by the Ukrainians um, as a result of offensive operation and the Russians lost possibilities to use this road for uh, supporting their forces and as for this road between Pilna in and Gluboka itself uh, this road is under complete Ukrainian FPV drone control today the Ukrainian sources published the video of a significant number of losses uh, among Russian armored vehicles and tanks on this road that the Russians were using for evacuation rotation bring additional reinforcements and reserves so once again nobody is going to fight for this village forever everybody uh, are waiting uh, for the end of the NATO summit and then either the Ukrainians or the Russians will decide uh, will make a certain decision regarding this territory. As for Sumy area, we have already discussed. The Ukrainians have started redeployment of their forces uh, to other directions, which can lead to some problems in this area in the future. And as for the Russians, they continue bombing and attacking this territory with all types of weapons they have. And now let's discuss another important video that was published today by pro-Russian sources. And this video, this event took place in Odessa area. The Russians reported that as a result of a reconnaissance operation, as a result of work of aviation forces, they first managed to discover the Ukrainian radar Giraffe and the, the two uh, Ukrainian air defense systems Patriot. And the Russians are saying that as a result of uh, Iskander strike, uh, either radar and two launching system Patriot systems were destroyed. Some Russian sources who has connections with the Minister of Defense provided us video of how they managed to discover the radar and how they managed to discover the Patriot system. Uh, I'm not saying that the Russians haven't managed to destroy these Patriot systems, but uh, when talking about this video, we can't tell for sure that the Russians did that. This is very important. This is very important and I would like to discuss with you this video. Uh, for example, the Ukrainians reported that the Russians destroyed fake fake uh, equipment, that the, the, what the Russians destroyed wasn't the Patriot systems and that the radar wasn't the giraffe radar. Uh, this is the statement of Ukrainian forces. And uh, for example, in this part of the video the Russians uh, shows Patriot systems that were discovered by the Russians and the next episode uh, was uh, uh, stated as the moment when the Russians destroyed those Patriot systems but the problem is that if we take a look at this moment and this episode I would like to uh, focus your attention on this particular episode because the Russian sources are saying that in this moment in this second 50, 55th second of this video the Russians destroyed the Patriot system but if we increase the numbers of updates since the beginning of May, uh, we're going to find another interesting geolocation almost in the same area. So this is the geolocation I'm talking about. And if we open this geolocation, we might see that uh, on the 17th of May, the Russians published the video how they managed to discover S-300 system. And as a result of strike, that S-300 system was destroyed. So if you take a look at this uh, particular, at this moment, you're going to see that something uh, the same, right? So the Patriot system was destroyed with the same uh, explosion and uh, S-300 system two months ago was destroyed almost the same way. So telling the truth, maybe the Minister of Defense of Russian Federation is not lying. Maybe they managed to destroy uh, the Patriot system and the Giraffe uh, radar because it's like official statement. But I'm just trying to tell you that uh, I believe that everybody have already seen this video. So I'm just trying to tell you that the video that you've seen doesn't show us anything according to the information we have, according to geolocations 
Russians. We don't have any evidence, any geolocated evidence that the Russians managed to destroy either two Patriot system and one a giraffe air defense radar. And that's it for today. Military Summary Channel reminds to condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes, join my Patreon and have a good day. Bye bye.